In consumer behavior, we have two things that influence behavior. On one side we have the preferences, on the other side we have the opportunities, or more precisely, the constraints. And, and we're going to talk about in this lecture budget constraints and then we'll use that in an application of what it means to be maximizing utility, what that picture looks A budget like. constraint tells us, given price of X, price of Y, and income, what bundles of X and Y can I afford? So given those three things, what bundles of X and Y can I afford? Now, one way to think about this, and it's actually not too bad to think about this, I want to think about my expenditures on X. That's just the price of X times however much of good X that I buy. I want to think about my expenditures on Y. You do the exact same thing. Price of Y times however much I spend on Y. I can add those two together, and one thing I know is that I can't spend more than I actually have to spend, and that's what my income is. And so we know that this inequality has to hold. And in fact, We'll just pretend like these are the only two goods in the whole wide world. There's good X and there's good Y. So, what does this budget constraint mean? Well, first things first, if we spend all of our money, this becomes an equality. We do have to spend less than our income, but we'll make the assumption that we're going to spend all the way up to our income. Think about it as the intercept is the income with the price of y. And we've got a negatively sloped line. It's a straight line. Go down and over. Go over 1. We go down the price of x over the price of y. So there's a budget constraint. It, when you actually go to implement this, uh, and, and actually draw a budget constraint, you're not going to solve for the slope-intercept form because, well, that's just silly. What you're going to do is go through a three-step process. And so let's do an example of this three-step process. And we'll do it with nice, easy numbers. Let's suppose that this consumer has $100 to spend. Say an allowance of $100. Little Johnny has allowance of $100. Uh, let's, for uh, the sake of having something tangible, let's say that the price of X is 10 and if you want to have uh, an idea of what good X is, let's say it's sticks of TNT. Let's say the other good, price of Y, has a price of $2. If you want to have some uh, something tangible, let's say that's uh, the good Y is whiskey, it's two dollars a shot. This person is spending all their money on uh, dynamite and whiskey. Um, so, first question we ask when we're drawing budget constraint is how much X? If I spend all my money on X, how much X can I buy? Well that's actually not too bad. Just divide the income by the price, and that tells you the total quantity that you can actually buy. So, in this case, the price of X into the income, uh, we can buy 10 sticks of TNT. And so we know that if we spend no money on Y, we're on this horizontal axis, spend all of our money on X, that is, about as, that is as far out as we can go. Now we can ask ourselves this second question. How much Y? Depending on your perspective, that's the exact same question. So how much Y can you buy if you spend all your money on Y? If you spend all your money on whiskey, $2 a shot, you have $100, you can buy 50 shots. So we can go ahead and say none of the money is spent on dynamite, all of it is spent on whiskey. This is not necessarily what we're going to do, but it is a possibility. You have 
your budget constraint. There's your budget constraint, and we know that these are the bundles that you can't afford. They're just inside, underneath, closer to zero, zero, spending nothing on each of the two goods. That is the set of bundles that you can actually buy. And so that is how you draw a budget constraint. Let's give this individual the objective of maximizing utility. Now let's suppose that we're at a bundle like bundle A. Bundle A is a bundle that this consumer can afford. It's inside this budget set. It's inside that triangle of affordable bundles. Now bundle A also has an indifference curve that goes through. There's a whole set of points in this plane that are equally good as bundle A. Let's draw that indifference curve. So here's the indifference curve, and we don't really care how much utility this individual actually has. Now notice that before when we were drawing indifference curves, indifference curves did, divided this plane into three sets. If you're on that blue line, you're equally good as A. If you're toward the origin, you're down farther on that hill, you're not as good as A. And if you're above, uh, up on the hill, uh, up and to the right on this, on this graph, you're better than A. So let's go ahead and shade in the better than A. Now let's ask ourselves, Venn diagram style, which of, these, which of the bundles on here are better than A? but we can still afford. Well, let's grab a different color. We can go ahead and shade that region. We know that the bundles that we can still afford are this triangular region. We know that the red shaded region are better than bundle A. If we have an individual who's looking for the best bundle he can find, that's what we mean by maximizing utility, that person's going to pick bundles that are in this area, or this area. They're choosing between A and all the other bundles that they can afford, they're going to move into this green shaded area. And in fact, we can keep drawing indifference curves, kind of figuring out where, where they've got to go, until we find indifference curve that just clips that budget line. It's going to just clip that budget line, it's going to be just tangent, and there aren't going to be any points anymore such that the consumer is better off but can still afford those bundles. And so that is a bundle, we'll call it bundle M for maximized utility. That is the best, given these prices and income, that is the best bundle for this consumer. And from here on out, that's what we're going to think of as the consumer's choice. This is the choice that we're going to assume that consumers make. We're going to assume that they look out for themselves, they look out for their best interests, and that they're going to choose bundles like bundle M. And so, when we think about maximizing utility in economics and consumer behavior, that's what we think of.